E60. Presented by Just For Men. Just For Men mustache and beard. Your best beard ever. All right, our next story is a little bit of a trip down memory lane. Lisa. Yeah, remember Penny Hardaway? There was a time he was one of the biggest stars in sports, not just in basketball. He was iconic. He and Shaq stepped into that vacuum created by Michael Jordan's sudden first retirement. The magic were really the big story. But think about after Michael Jordan, who did Nike gravitate towards after that? Lil Penny was all over the place. And in an era that was defined by your ability to look out for yourself, and he remembered who got him there. He was that kid from Memphis, and that's what this story is about. He reconnected with a dear childhood friend, and though he never won an NBA title, Penny Hardaway is now a champion in basketball. I'll show you why. Exciting one for you in this one. Memphis East and Hillsboro. Memphis East, the Mustangs coming in from Memphis, Tennessee. March 2016. Memphis East is in the Tennessee High School Basketball State Tournament. They are led by this man. Can't be scared. You're going to have some nerves early, but we cannot be scared. We got the team to do it. We got the staff to do it. Let's go get it. If we play together, I don't think anything can stop us. That's just how it works. Jump on them early, get it over with, stay together. It's gonna be a wrap. 20 years ago, Penny Hardaway was an NBA All-Star. Over you Are you serious? Goodness gracious! Now at 44, he's a high school basketball coach. Please. The reason he's here has everything to do with a lifelong friend who is not. Let's go! We talk about him every day. We talk about what he expects. Help. Help. He started this. I think it's my job now. Keep it going. On the east side of Memphis is a neighborhood called Binghampton one of the poorest areas in the city. Coming from our neighborhood, we call it a bowl because most guys get stuck there. You get to the top of the bowl and you slide right back down. It was here more than 30 years ago that a friendship began between Anthony Hardaway, nicknamed Penny, and Desmond Merriweather. What drew us together was we love basketball. We met like every night on the basketball court. So we always had a little rivalry. I was probably 10 years old. Desmond was probably like seven or eight years old. And it just kept growing from there. We both loved the basketball courts. Who was your favorite back then? Who was his? My favorite was Isaiah Thomas. His favorite was Magic Johnson. Where did you and Des uh, used to play? We used to like, hang out at this, at this park. This was our park. What are some of your best memories of some of your best shots out here? Well, I mean, game winners. Everybody's fouling. I'm the little kid on the block, so they pass the ball over to me while they're getting double teamed, and then I knock down the shot. You're a hero, so that's how you become a hero in the neighborhood. You knock down the big shots. Number 25, Anthony Hardaway. The friends attended rival high schools. Dez was a playmaking guard at East High. Penny, a superstar at Treadwell. Both would play at the next level. Dez at Division II Lane College. Penny at Memphis State, where he became a consensus All-American in 1993. Hardaway, great pass! With the third pick in the 1993 NBA Draft, the Golden State Warriors select Anthony Hardaway from Memphis State University. Well, it's interesting because the scouts that you truly respect feel that he is the best player in the draft. On draft night, the Orlando Magic traded for Penny, pairing him with another young superstar, Shaquille O'Neal. When he came into the league, he was fabulous. He was a LeBron without the big muscles. Playing with this guy, in my vision, I saw the next Magic Johnson in green. 
By his second season in 1994-95, Penny was named first team All-NBA and led the Magic to the NBA Finals. The Orlando Magic. It's a free country. If I want to give interviews, I'll give interviews. You know what your problem is? You're too modest. That season, with the help of his alter ego, Little Penny, voiced by comedian Chris Rock, Penny became a pop culture icon. But I'm a choreographer for the magic dance. Get you a job if you want. Hey, ooh, whoa, Penny, stop the car! That was Tyra Banks, fool! It was almost like being a rock star. I was having so much fun. If we would have had Twitter back then, I probably would have had 10 million followers. I knew he would become famous because he was always better than everyone. So when you grow up and go off and become Penny, in what ways did you guys stay in touch? Well, we kind of lost touch. I occasionally see him. We catch up on old times, exchange numbers, and then it would just be that. And uh, it, this went on for years. What was originally thought to be tendonitis was more serious than that. And Penny Hardaway will miss the next eight to 10 weeks of the NBA season. For Penny, what began as a routine left knee surgery in 1997 snowballed into chronic knee problems. He would undergo six surgeries in 10 years. In December of 2007, after being released by the Miami Heat, Penny retired, having earned $120 million over 16 years, but never having won a championship. Going from being first team All-NBA to having the injuries, it was very tough when it finally came to an end. Not finishing my career up the way I wanted to, it's probably gonna always haunt me because I, I'll always say, what if? Following his retirement, Penny returned home to Memphis. There, an old friend was coaching basketball at Leicester Middle School in their old neighborhood. To, to get that, once the Corbin get that, then you shoot. The year before I got here, they, we were three and 23. And my first year, we were 24 and eight. We made it all the way to the state. I lost the first round. In 2009, after he turned the program around, Dez was in the midst of his second season on the sideline when he realized something was wrong. I would um, have like a lot of pain in my hamstrings and in my legs. And so I went to the doctor like several times. And so the last time, they sent me to get a colonoscopy. And that's when I found out. What did they tell you? They told me I had um, colon cancer. Dez's cancer was stage four. At age 36, doctors told him he would only live three to seven more years. In October 2010, he developed an infection that left him hospitalized in critical condition. And the doctor came out and said that he got, he has only 24 hours to live, but it's up to him if he's gonna pull through. And you know, my mom kind of fell to the floor and all his friends, everybody just kind of started crying and walking out. They had this breathing machine on my face and the only thing I can do is write. What did you write? I said, call Penny. I went directly to the hospital. What and, did he uh, say? He was like, man, I'm, I'm fighting for my life, uh, but all that matters to me right now is not even me, it's the kids. And that's what shocked me the most. He was like, man, I'm not here worrying about your team right now. I'm here to see about you. We'll talk about that later. After three months in the hospital, Dez would pull through. And from that bedside conversation, came an idea. He was like, man, I'm not feeling it. I'm not strong enough. Can you go ahead and be the head coach and I'll just sit in the background? And I was really going to, to be there for a friend, a friend that was in need. Too many turnovers. We're not getting enough shots. We're only averaging 50 shots a game. I watched Penny on YouTube and it made me excited to think, to, you know, to have him to be my coach. You're supposed to be over here. You was watching and you was like, Oh, now I got to get in the play. Hands up. As Coach Penny took charge of the team, Coach Dez needed to take more and more breaks.
once every two weeks, 128. Des leaves the team to undergo chemotherapy. Right now, um, it's not really a feeling because it's just going into my system. But like I feel like the sleeping is once it comes on shortly. You know, I just remember, you know, he'll go get his treatments done, and sometimes he couldn't even, he'll be in the practice, but he would have to lay down while Penny run the practice. And I used to tell him, man, sometimes you just have to stay at home. He said, I can't. It made us keep fighting even harder because it showed us that how much he really cared about us and how much he loved us. What inspiration can you tell the kids draw from you? They know what you're going through. Could y'all stop for a sec? Mm-hmm. Let me get to the rest of the Uh, can everyone see Lisa? Yes. Yes. All right. I'm speeding. Mark. Were you not feeling well? Mm-hmm. Did you just get sick? Yes. Why do you do this? <laughs> It's for the kids. I mean, it's taking so much out of you. But it's also putting so much in. All right, who wants to win today? Well, just raise your hand. Late December 2011. It started with one win, then another, and another. And we call it the run. Play D. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. TK, stay with 23. In their first season together, Coach Penny and Coach Dez led Lester to a school record 14 game winning streak and a middle school state title. Great job tonight, beautiful Coach Dez. He's been wonderful. The next year, another championship. And another the year after that. When you think of Ben Hampton, you got to think of this man. He stayed in Ben Hampton to be with y'all because that's how much he loved y'all. So now y'all got to give it up for the greatest coach. What does it mean to you to have Penny on the sideline with you? Words can't explain. It means so much. Let's go. Let's go home, man. Good job. It's like one of the greatest joys I have in life. I will never forget that. One, two, three. Wow, 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 yes, sir. After three middle school state titles, Penny took a break from coaching. Dez followed the boys to East High School and became head coach in the fall of 2014. But his health was failing. I just say it was a long journey, and, it, and that's basically what it was. You know, it wasn't a sprint, it was a marathon, and he kept running as far as he could until he just couldn't run anymore. Less than a month into the season, Dez had to step down. Then in February, as the state tournament approached, Penny received an urgent message to visit Dez. I grabbed his hand when I walked in, and he was trying to talk to me and couldn't talk. He was just trying to say something to me. And the lady that was taking care of him was saying, well, here's Penny, Penny's here. He says that he loves you. And he was like, do you love him back? And he was trying to talk and he couldn't talk. And that was just, that just crushed me. And, um, and about 30 minutes after that, he passed. Desmond Merriweather died on February 8th, 2015. He was 41 years old. Good 
Good morning. Boy, this is tough. But I got to push on for my guy. The thing about Dez that I love the most is that he shows so much love. You know, being in the NBA and being around people, you kind of stand off. But Dez taught me how to love again. Through all he was going through, our years together, he taught me how to love again. His heart was way bigger than his body. And, and through it all, you know, it's just, I'm going to miss him so much. And to the players, all the players that's played for Dez and that's played for us, thank you. Thank you for giving us your time, your hard work, your love. We did it for y'all. Dez did it for y'all. And keep dreaming because he dreamed big. I love y'all. Thank you. That was really hurt. It was heartbroken because, like, that guy right there was really the father that I really looked up to, as, especially as basketball-wise, because he showed me everything that I need to know. It's going to be hard just, you know what I'm saying, living the rest of our life without him because he was a big part of it. Later, the Memphis East Mustangs played in the state tournament. Penny was in the stands. They were eliminated in the semifinals. I wasn't doing well because Desmond had passed. I felt like I needed to be on the bench. I wasn't doing well because Desmond had passed. I felt like I needed to be on the bench to try to help motivate the guys more. Well, you know Des had a mission, and now, did he pass that baton on to you? Or? He did. I think he did. He did pass it on to me. Our mission was to do what we said we were going to do, and I have to carry it out. And he got the ball, and I go here, I don't even take no dribble. One, two. December 2015. Like, what you doing Former this? NBA oh, superstar you Penny Hardaway you is back coaching basketball, this time here, at Memphis East High School. Months after the former coach, his friend, Desmond Merriweather, died from colon cancer. He's always on our mind because he started this. So the guy that started this, you can never forget about. We talk about him every day. We talk about what he expects, what he's doing, and we know that he'll be watching over us every game. Every day we got a chant that we say, one for all, all for one, all for this. So we just go out there and give it all that we got. One for all, all for all this. In Penny's first season as coach, the East Mustangs won 29 of their first 31 games. They were ranked in the top 25 in the nation. Still, one goal remained. To win state. Win a state championship. It's championship or bust. March 16, 2016. It's the state tournament, eight teams, single elimination, to determine a champion. This is a statement game. Everybody wants to see what East is going to do. This is bigger than us. They started this vision a long time ago, man. We're trying to carry it out. One, two, three, sway East! Let's go, man. Penny led East to the semifinals, where they faced undefeated Blackman. Blackman from right here in Murfreesboro in Memphis East of Memphis, Tennessee. I expect a terrific basketball game with this one. Blackman just struggling to get shots against his tenacious Memphis East defense. Lots of pressure. There's a Bolden back call. He goes to Carter, fires up a three, and it is good. Blackman must score, you would think, this trip. Wilson, long three. Good! Three-point lead for East. Blackman's going to have to steal at the foul. They're not. Long pass up the floor with six seconds. Right side, Lawson will take it up and jam it right now. And then do it. East victory set up a matchup with Cordova for the state title. 
Well, you know, there's got to be butterflies. If there's not, you're not human. Up the floor, they run. Moss tees up a three. It is good right wing. The Memphis East has exploded here in the last five minutes. They got numbers. Good. Only 7.8 seconds stand between Memphis East and the state title. Cordova firing up a three at the buzzer. It is tipped up and no good, and that will end it. Vision was written, spoken by Dez, but now it has come to fruition. Rest in peace, Dez. Mm-hmm. He's smiling. It's my boy D-Mac. <laughs> Put the ones up for D-Mac, baby. He's smiling right now, him and Miss Shaw. We miss y'all. We love y'all. Oh,